Hello everyone and welcome back to Mass Effect Legendary Edition. In the last session we began our journey, a huge upcoming journey, <laughs> and uh, we met our crew, we went down to Eden Prime, I believe it was called, and uh, things went pretty badly there. <laughs> Two people died, uh, there is a whole bunch of robot dudes that really don't like us very much. And, uh, yeah, we will be continuing on from there. Replenish Medigel. Don't mind if I do. Oh, boy, the Codex has already been updated. We've barely begun. Sup. I'm glad you're okay, Commander. The crew could use some good news after what happened to Jenkins. <laughs> Soldiers die. Fuck me. He'll be missed. Jenkins was a valuable part of this crew. Part of me feels guilty over what happened. If Jenkins was still alive, I might not be here. You earned it. You're a good soldier, Williams. You belong on the Normandy. Thanks, Commander. That means a lot from you. I've never met anyone who was awarded the Star of Terra. How are you holding up, then? Things were pretty rough down there. Are you okay? I've seen friends die before. It comes with being a Marine. But to see my whole unit wiped out, and you never get used to seeing dead civilians. But things would have been a lot worse if you hadn't shown up. You pulled your weight, though. We couldn't have done it without you, Williams. Thanks, Commander. I have to admit, I was a little worried about being assigned to the Normandy. It's nice when someone makes you feel welcome. Glad to have you here. I think you're gonna fit in here just fine, Williams. Thanks, Commander. Sweet! Yes, Commander? Is there something you need? Uh, I've got some personal questions. How did you end up serving on an Alliance ship? I enlisted right out of med school. Earth always seemed boring to me. Too safe. Too secure. I figured the colonies were teeming with exotic adventure. Well, you've certainly I found wanted adventure to travel now. The stars, tending the wounds of tough soldiers with piercing eyes and sensitive souls. <laughs> Turns out military life isn't quite as romantic as I'd imagined. But humanity needs the Alliance if we want to keep expanding through the Traverse. And the Alliance always needs good doctors. So I stayed on to do my part. Do you regret it? Ever think you made the wrong choice? Sometimes I think about opening a private practice back on Earth. Or maybe taking a position at one of the new med centers out in the colonies. But there's something special about working on soldiers. If I left the Alliance now, I'd feel like I was abandoning them. Fair. What do you know about Captain Anderson? I've served with him for a few tours now. He knows when to let things slide and when to crack the whip. Yeah, he seems good. The crew knows he's seen pretty much anything they'll ever run into. And he cares about the people under his command. Yeah, I, I like him. Uh, and talk to me about Caden. How well do you know the lieutenant? I'd never worked with him before this mission. But he has an impressive service record. Over a dozen special commendations. Tends to keep to himself, though. Maybe because of the headaches. It's not easy being an L2. Oh, what now? What does that have to do with it? Well, most biotics now use the L3 implants. Lieutenant Alenko was wired with the old L2 configuration. Sometimes there are complications. Oh, yeah? Such as? What kind of complications? Severe mental disabilities, insanity, crippling physical pain. Oof. There's a long list of horrific side effects. Caden's lucky. He just gets migraines. So do I have these uh, third gen ones then? I should go. Goodbye, Commander. Hey, bro. Glad to see you're okay, Commander. Well, lovely chatting to you. <laughs> the ladies get full-on convos. You get, hey, man. <laughs> That's it. Um, sorry, what is the actual mission that we have right now? It is speak to Joker in the cockpit. Okay, uh, let's just have a little look around because the cockpit's down there, right? I think, or is it? Wait, no. Am I not? I'm not where I thought I was. What's, what is this then? Are these like pods that you drop down to the surface in? Hi. Okay. Can't, uh, can't talk to you guys. Yeah, I guess we are not where I thought we were. Is there anything in here? Can talk to Captain Anderson? Go speak to Joker when you're ready. Tell him to bring the Normandy into dock. I feel like I know his voice. I'm trying to figure out where I know his voice from. 
It's probably a well-known voice actor or something. I don't know. <laughs> I recognize it. Uh, where does the elevator go? <laughs> I love that my shadow wasn't quite following me then. What the fuck? <laughs> what light source is doing that? In the Normandy's vehicle bay, using a squad member's locker allows you to assign equipment to them. Your equipment may be purchased from the requisition officer. Hello. Hey, Commander. Looking for some extra supplies before you head out? What have you got? Whatever you want. Armor, weapons, mods. It's not standard Alliance issue, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Well, as long as you don't mind paying for it. Pay you? Why should I pay you for my weapons and armor? My stuff doesn't come from the Alliance. I have to purchase it myself, and it's not cheap. Hell, the licenses alone have set me back more than I'd like. But no licenses, no goods. Without the goods, I'm out of a job. Uh, tell me about licenses. What are licenses? Why do you need them? Manufacturers sell licenses. Each license allows me to buy and sell a certain brand of products. I already have several basic ones, but you'll need to buy more if you want me to bring in different brands. Many of the best licenses are hard to get, but they're well worth the cost if you can find them. Uh, tell me about the manufacturers. What do the different manufacturers offer? There are too many for me to keep track of, but each license will explain what it's good for. Uh, what about new items? Did these two just swap place? I swear licenses was at the top before. How often will you get new items? Well, that depends on how many licenses you've purchased, but I'll rotate items on a regular basis regardless. And any time we land someplace with a big enough port, I'll buy, sell, and trade whatever I can. Check back often. I need to move items quickly, so only the most basic items will be stocked consistently. Okay, let's have a look. Let's see what you've got. You bet, Commander. Oh boy. Uh, heavy armor costs 24,500. Uh, I'm a little short on that. Gotta say, a little... A little bit, uh, yep, yeah, no, I cannot afford anything except a medigel upgrade. Hello. Increases maximum units of medigel by one. Sure. Definitely. Grenade upgrade, maximum number of grenades by one. Sure. Well, those both seem worth having, so I'm glad I checked it here, even if I can't get anything else. <laughs> Thanks for that. Got a little, what does that say? M35 Mako? Mako? Got a codex thing for it. Cool, cool. We can have a look at that later. Anything hidden behind here? No. <laughs> I would like to equip one Ashley. I guess that means there's going to be six companions in total. We've got Ashley, Caden, and four that we cannot see yet. Uh, okay. What have we got? She's got the storm shotgun. Man, I really feel like the damage trade-offs are not worth the heat sink trade-offs. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Oh, wait, is that... Wait, no, that's good. Wait, is it? Huh. I'm confused. <laughs> is, is heat sink capacity how many seconds it would take to max out if you kept firing it? Is that... Am I, am I realizing that well? So here, that's red because that sucks. If it maxes out in 1.6 seconds, then you can't do anything. However, here, 6.8 seconds? So that sounds good. But then it's also high damage. But then why is 102 damage green and the damage per second on this one is yellow? Because I would have thought green would mean the best, but I don't know. Unsure. Unsure. You know what? Let's just leave you and let's equip me instead. Uh, where's my shotgun? The, oh, well, I'm on it. Brilliant. Okay, so my current shotgun. Okay, I'm going to put this one on. Because it seems better. It seems better in every way, right? Right? Let me know if I'm misreading. Because that just seems so much better. Uh, assault rifle. We don't have any options. Hmm. We've got armor that is not for our species. Okay. Pistol. Uh, the edge seems better than that. Uh, 
Yeah, that can go to gel. That can go to gel. Sure, just gel all that stuff. The accuracy rating on that is abysmal. So, no thanks. Okay, that's enough of that. What's down here? What the hell is this? Oh, is this our is this our own Mass Effect propulsion system thing? Shame about Jenkins, Commander. It is. Crying shame. Field integrity monitor? Element zero core? Okay. I'm surprised that that's just, like, freely accessible. Anyone can come down and take a look at this big old core. <laughs> okay. Let's head back up. Sup, man. And then let's go up these stairs. Hi, can I talk to you? Nope. Uh, so that's the bridge down there. Can I talk to any of you guys? F Fast than light comlink? Got a codex for it. Gonna, gotta learn the layout of this ship, seeing as I'm going to be traversing it a bunch. Wait, what was that? Nav manual. Oh, that's something over there. Only the commanding officer may specify a destination for the Normandy. Right. I'm glad you're okay, Commander. Losing Jenkins was hard enough on the crew. Cheers, man. I'm glad that you're glad. More codex stuff. Oh, we're going to have a lot of codex to read. We are going to have a lot of codex to read at the end of the part. <laughs> or the end of the next part. However many I do. Uh, probably a couple. We'll do codex stuff at the end of the final one of this recording session. Anyway, hi, Joker. Good timing, Commander. I was just about to bring us into the Citadel. See that taxpayer money at work. Sweet. This is the massive joint, right? And these are... These things are the mass relays? They're facilitating our faster-than-light travel? Is what I'm taking from that? Oh my god, you see on the right. Wow! Look at the size of that ship. The Ascension, flagship of the Citadel fleet. Well, size isn't everything. Wow, well, that's gorgeous. I'm just saying, you need firepower too. Look at that monster. Its main gun could rip through the barriers on any ship in the Alliance fleet. Good thing it's on our side, then. Citadel Control, this is SSV Normandy, requesting permission to land. Stand by for clearance, Normandy. Clearance granted. You may begin your approach. Transferring you to an Alliance operator. Roger, Alliance Tower. Normandy out. Normandy, this is Alliance Tower. Please proceed to dock 422. God damn, that was pretty. Oh my god, is this the inside this of the is circle? This an outrage! The Council would step in if the Geth attacked a Turian colony? The Turians don't found colonies on the borders of the Terminus systems, Ambassador. Humanity was well aware of the risks when you went into the Traverse. What about Seren? You can't just ignore a rogue specter. I demand action! You don't get to make demands of the Council, Ambassador. Citadel Security is investigating your charges against Seren. We will discuss the CSEC findings at the hearing, not before. Captain Anderson, I see you brought half your crew with you. Just the ground team from Eden Prime, in case you had any questions. I have the mission reports. I assume they're accurate? They are. 
Sounds like you convinced the Council to give us an audience. They were not happy about it. Seren's their top agent. They don't like him being accused of treason. Well, he is dangerous. Seren's a threat to every human colony out there. He needs to be stopped. The Council has to listen to us. Settle down, Commander. You've already done more than enough to jeopardize your candidacy for the Spectres. Fuck off! The mission on Eden Prime was a chance to prove you could get the job done. Instead, Nihilus ended up dead and yes, the you, was Saren. destroyed. Yes, thank you, Saren. That's Saren's fault, not his. Yes, exactly. Then thank we you. We better hope the CSEC investigation turns up evidence to support our accusations. Otherwise, the Council might use this as an excuse to keep you out of the Spectres. Come with me, Captain. I want to go over a few things before the hearing. Shepard, you and the others can meet us at the Citadel Tower, top level. I'll make sure you have clearance to get in. And that's why I hate politicians. Important locations are marked on your map. Open the mission computer to access it. Oh, yeah? Oh, boy. Okay. Okie dokie. We are here, Udina's office, Volus and Elcor office. Uh, that is someone called Avina. Point of interest. CSEC HQ, Embassy Lounge. Another point of interest over here. Wait. Wait. All of the point of interest are the same thing. I'm confused. Bank Emporium is a store. Okay. Uh, and I'm not actually seeing a destination, but I guess we'll need to go through a transition to get to the destination then. Cool. Follow the pulsing arrow on your radar. No thanks, I'm going to explore. <laughs> is there anything we can read in here? Oh, there is. Alliance Patrol Report. Captain Hendrickson reported some unusual energy readings during a patrol of the Argos Row Cluster. She had particular concerns about the Hydra system, but was recalled before her team could investigate further. No patrols are scheduled for that sector. Do we want to send in a recon team? Interesting. Okay, let us get out of here then. What was in here? Oh my fucking hello. But these allegations are very serious. I can't just... This is serious. My reputation is at stake. I spoke with the consort in confidence, and her alone, and she betrayed that confidence. All right, I will look into it for you. In the meantime, do not do anything rash. Hi. Hello there, human. Sincere apology, but I am here on business and cannot be distracted right now. What's up, man? You seem distressed. Is there something I can do to help? Alarmed response. You overheard that, did you? <laughs> you sound very this alarmed. It's all going so wrong. And it is the Asari consort's fault. She's the one who started all this. Uh, consort? Who's this Asari consort? Curious. You have not heard. You must be new to the Citadel. Everyone knows Shatira, the consort. I cannot speak more about this problem. It is too sensitive. Suffice it to say, she has compromised my authority as a diplomat. Can we go and talk to her about it? Where can I find the Sasari consort? She is across the bridge from here. Her offices are easy enough to spot. Good day, human. Good day. Can I talk to you? Pleased greeting. Human, it is always good to see your <laughs> I guess they state what I tone they're talking in because they always sound so monotone. Theory. Is there something I can do for you this day? Uh, uh, your speech. Why do you explain what you're about to say? Our people communicate less through words and more through scent and slight movements. Plainly, we discovered our vocal expression was not enough to convey the feelings of our conversations to other species. That's really cool. Why do you bother, Kaelin? These Earth Clan don't really care about our ways. Remorseful response, Din. 
You don't truly believe that. <laughs> and if you do, I am very sorry for Wait, you. that little dude said our ah, ways, but they're clearly not the same species. So what, what's up with that? Tell me more about your species. Genuine enthusiasm. I delight in telling the history of my people. It is agreeable to share our culture with others. Go on then. Tell me about the history and origins of the Elcor. The Elcor were just beginning to explore Council space when the Asari first made contact with us. With their help, we discovered the relay closest to our system, and from there the Citadel. Proudly, within one lifetime we established a regular route to the Citadel, and quickly became one of the more active species living on this great station. Nice. Oh wait, shit. No. Uh, culture. I'd like to know more about the culture of the Elcor. Frankly, we Elcor prefer the safety and familiarity of our own colonies to the confines of space travel. Our society is built on small, tight-knit groups. Though we are always welcoming to outsiders, our government tends to be very stable. Our people are not very comfortable with sudden changes. Okay. What do you do here? Modestly. I work to bring the problems and the requests of the Elcor groups to the attention of the Council. Ha! They only give us these positions to keep us quiet. The Council doesn't care about our races. Chastising rebuke. Your tone is inappropriate, Dan. This human is not to blame for your malcontent or your misconceived suspicions. I like this guy. Goodbye, Ambassador. Sincere farewell. Good day to you, human. <laughs> Enjoy your time on the Citadel. Fuck you, but you're great. Oh wait, I can actually talk to you? Earth Clan, you are in the wrong place, I think. Your Ambassador is next door in the large office. Chastising remark. <laughs> Don't be Chastising so remark. At least introduce yourself. <sighs> I am Din Korlak, Volus Ambassador. Is there something I can do for you, Earth Clan? Oh boy. <laughs> Tell me all of this stuff. What is this place? You are in the embassy for the Volus and the Elcor. Your ambassador is next door, in his own office. In this shared space, I aid my fellow Volus when I'm not being interrupted. Uh, tell me about your species. I'd like to know more about the Volus. I'm sure our history and culture would bore you, Earth Clan. Try me. Actually, I would like to know more about your history. My people came to the Citadel shortly after the Asari and Salarians had discovered it. We were instrumental in establishing a standardized galactic economy. However, despite our long association with the Citadel and our many contributions to galactic society, we still do not hold a seat on the Council. That sounds like a feels bad. Tell me about Volus culture. We are tribal by nature, but our ways are not violent. We barter and trade our lands and tribe members in order to increase status. Larger tribes often engulf smaller ones and eventually split again. Our society is very malleable, and our government is always shifting. Sounds like the absolute changing. opposite of the big dudes, then. Since we're not physically adept, we trade our services for protection. What is it you do here? I look out for the best interests of the Volus people. No easy task, considering how often we are overlooked by the Council. Chastising rebuke, Dan. <laughs> the Council favors your species greatly. You are naive. The Earth Clan will be invited to the Council long before our species will. What does it take to get on? Why aren't the Volus or Elcor part of the Council? All species must prove themselves before they join the Council. All but the Earth Clans, it would seem. Dismissive. Ignore the Volus Ambassador, human. 
He is incorrect in his assessment. Really? How long have we been waiting? How long do you think we'll continue to wait? Bah, this talk is wasted on the humans. Why so moody, my duty? You seem to have a bit of a chip on your shoulder, Din. You humans are new to the Citadel, and yet the Council has granted you great favor. <sighs> Chastising rebuke, Din. Your species has always been granted many concessions. Bolas' territory has expanded tenfold since coming to the Citadel. <laughs> Details. We still have no real say in the decisions that affect Citadel space. Cool. Goodbye, Ambassador. Yes, yes. Good day, Earth Clan. Can't talk to you. No. Okay, let's head out of here then and uh, start having a gander around everywhere else. Can't go through there. Open sesame. Ah. Allow me to be your guide. Avina is an AI. Greetings and welcome to the Presidium. My name is Avina. That explains why the name is everywhere at once. Throughout this level of the Citadel space station. So are you a person or a program? I am a fully interactive virtual intelligence. Yeah. Programmed to provide spontaneous guidance at predetermined locations of interest throughout this level of the Citadel. I may also be contacted through any of the Presidium VI terminals, should you require assistance. Sounds interesting. Give me the tour. You are standing at Presidium Tourism Terminal 1. On either side of this lobby are the embassies of the various Citadel races, along with CSEC headquarters. On the far end of this level, you can see the Citadel Tower, where the Council meets regularly to discuss matters of interstellar importance. Uh, tell me about CSEC. I want to know more about Citadel Security. That's what it stands for. Citadel Security serves as law enforcement for all regions of the Citadel, though the majority of officers serve in the wards. Executor Palin, a Turian, is the current head of CSEC, but individuals from virtually every species across Citadel space serve as officers beneath him. If you wish to learn more, Executor Palin's office is located in the CSEC headquarters just across the lobby. Alright, tell me about the embassies. Tell me about the embassies. Each species in Citadel space important enough to be consulted on matters of galactic politics maintains an embassy on the Presidium. The Volus were the first non-council species to be granted an embassy, roughly 2,384 galactic standard years ago. As Citadel space has expanded, more embassies have been added. The most recently added embassy belongs to your own species, humanity. It was added 19 galactic standard years ago, despite some rather vocal opposition. Why was humanity opposed? Why were people trying to keep my species out? Some species felt humanity was given preferential treatment. It often takes a century or more before a new species is granted an embassy. And how the long did it take us? The gave a great deal of thought to this matter. In the end, they decided humanity's impact on Citadel space was significant enough to warrant an embassy. And what do you think? She's probably going to say she doesn't have an opinion because she's an AI. Do you agree with their decision? I am not programmed to make that kind yeah. of qualified judgment. My code is limited to information and simple interaction simulations. So how come the Volus were first? How come the Volus were the first species given an embassy? In the early years following the formation of the Council, the Volus were, apart from the Asari and Salarians, the most populous and widespread species in Citadel space. They were the little, little boys we just spoke to, right? They new colonies and trading outposts, and they petitioned the Council for a greater role in determining interstellar policy. In recognition of their work to expand interstellar trade and establish a standardized galactic economy, the Volus were granted an embassy here on the Citadel. Just an embassy? Why weren't they made a council race? The council races have extensive responsibilities. They must provide personnel and ships for the Citadel fleets. They often provide economic aid in times of disaster. It would be unfair to demand such an enormous burden of a species unable to meet these obligations. 
The embassies allow lesser species to have a voice on the citadel. <laughs> when you say lesser. That's pretty damn arrogant. I apologize if my personality has offended you. Please submit all formal complaints in writing to the Citadel Tourist and Visitor Board. Do you know anything about Spectres? The term Spectre is derived from the branch of Special Tactics and Reconnaissance. Each Spectre agent is handpicked by the Council. Their primary role is preserving galactic stability and resolving volatile situations that cannot be handled through normal political channels. In this role, they are granted extraterritorial rights and jurisdictions. Spectres answer to no law or authority except the council itself. And tell me about that council. What can you tell me about the Citadel Council? Originally, the council consisted of representatives from the Asari and Salarians. The two dominant species in Citadel space. Roughly 1,304 galactic standard years ago, Turians were invited to join the Council in recognition of the role they played during the Krogan Rebellion. Since then, the three Council races have worked together to ensure the peaceful coexistence of the galactic community, while preserving individual autonomy for each species. Hmm, don't know if I believe that it's as good as it sounds. It can't be as simple as that. There must be problems somewhere in the system. I am not programmed to make that kind of qualified judgment. My code is limited to information and simple interaction simulations. Fair enough. Goodbye. Goodbye, and thank you for using Avena. Please enjoy your visit to the Citadel. Love that face. Very cool. Very, very cool. Okay, so let me just bring up the map. Where am I looking right now? We are here. We are going up to CSEC HQ and the Embassy Lounge. Okay. Let's have a look. Boo doo. This is the Embassy Lounge, I guess. Diplomat. I can't believe I landed a job here. This place is fantastic. Human, delighted, welcome. It is good to meet you. <laughs> Diplomatic archive. Codex staff, okie doke. Hello, you're like Saren. Another one of these that I can't talk to. Okay, nothing really in here. So, CSEC. Oh, this is Top Dog, Executor Palin. Commander Shepard, I didn't expect to see you here. Did Ambassador Udina send you? Who are you? Well, I know who he is, but let's ask anyway, see what more information we can turn over. Have we met before? No, but I know you well enough. I'm Executor Palin, head of CSEC. It's my job to know when someone like you arrives on the Citadel. <laughs> Was there something you needed? Our have? reputation precedes us. Uh, tell me about Turian's attitude towards humans. I get the feeling you're not too fond of humans. Or just your personal no, attitude? I just don't trust your kind. Not yet. You humans are eager to take all the power you can get. And you're being given a lot. If the Council wants to make humanity their new favorite pet, that's their business. But I don't have to like it. Uh, I kind of want to say this, but it kind of sounds shitty, right? The council treats us like second-class citizens. We have to fight for everything we get. Okay, it wasn't that Good. shitty. Then fight for it. But don't expect the rest of us to just sit back and let you take it. I'm a busy man, Commander. Are we done here? <laughs> Afraid not, mate. Tell me about Spectres. What do you know about the Spectres? They're the right hand of the council, or so they like to be called. More like the underhanded side of the council. You don't like them, then? What do you have against the Spectre? I can't abide any organization that considers itself above the law. Especially when it's left up to each individual specter to decide when and how to bend the rules. Sometimes you have to bend the law to keep people safe. I've been with CSEC for 30 years. I've never had to break the law to do my job, not once. Yeah, right. You expect us to believe none of your officers are correct? <laughs> yeah, you tell him, Ashley. There are over 200,000 CSEC agents. Some of them are going to be bad. But we don't turn a blind eye to corruption like the Spectres do. We do our best to find and punish any officer who breaks the law. Spectres. 
They'll never come under that kind of scrutiny. Well, they play an important role, right? The galaxy needs people like that. People who do the dirty jobs. I agree. But they need to be held to a higher standard. They need to be accountable. Okay, yeah. Saren's out of control. We both know that. But because he's a Spectre, the Council doesn't want to do anything about it. Is that the kind of person this galaxy needs? No. But not all Spectres are like Saren. True. But the potential is always there. Tell me about CSEC. CSEC provides necessary police and security services throughout the Citadel. We're a civilian government agency, though many of our members have had military training. Of course, as the CSEC representative to the Council, I spend most of my time liaising between the two. <laughs> Fun. Tell me about your investigation into Saren. Sorry, Commander. I don't make a habit of giving out details about ongoing investigations. I'll be going now. Goodbye. Hey, cheeky level. Cheeky level. Six points. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I could unlock shotguns just by putting points into pistols, but eh. Um, advanced warp. Eight damage per second. Lowers the target's protection by 60%. We can get another charm point. Let's do that. A 2% discount. Lucky me. Uh... Seven hundred points. What's that up from? Up from four hundred. Okay. Uh, that could be good. Man, recharge time is sixty seconds. That is pretty long. Okay, let's put a few points there so we can almost get to lift. Uh, and then let's. Put a few points there, I guess. Is there any way... This increases my body protection. I just, is there any way to uh, reduce the time it takes for my stuff to recharge? That's what I really want. <laughs> but, uh... Oh, just getting to there makes it go down to 50. And getting to there makes it go down to 40. Okay. Sounds good. Let's just do that. I should probably think about putting points into pistols and shotguns, given that, like, considering the cooldowns, I'm going to be using guns a lot more than I'm going to be using powers, but powers are cool as shit, you know? <laughs> oh, wait. We need to up upgrade everyone else as well. Um, sure. Uh, you can get sabotage. Unlock stasis. What does stasis do? A powerful field that immobilizes a single target. Hmm. Let's put you into decryption and... Sure, let's give you first aid and move along that a bit. That sounds good. And then Ashley, we are going fully into assault rifles with you, and sure, combat armor, why not? Why not, eh? There we go, lovely jubbly. Okay, we're not in the prologue anymore, that's good. That is good, right, lovely chatting with you. Man, this is very, very cool. I love the fake sky. And it's a circle, I guess. And yeah, there's artificial gravity, right? Nice water feature. This is really pretty. They've done a good job on remastering this. I'll have to look at some point and see what it used to look like, but... This is great. Okay, let's keep going. 